So first up, $1 trillion in housing bonds, U.S. real estate crisis held back by Fed's mortgage purchases. This is scary. This is one of those things that really does concern me because the government is trying to do its best. The Fed is trying to do its best. They're trying to stave off economic collapse, and this is the best they can do. But I have to tell you, there's no end in sight for what's going to happen, and I only see dark days ahead. I just do. Uh, I don't. I'm not a very, I'm usually a pretty optimistic guy. Really, I am. But uh, with this going on, I just don't see any way around it. Anyhow, emergency powers to stop landlords nationwide from evicting tenants has been enacted by the CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Moreover, the Federal Reserve has purchased $1 trillion in mortgage bonds since March. $1 trillion, that's with a T, capturing 30% of the country's outstanding mortgage bonds. So you have to understand, everything is relative. So this is good for the people who were laid off, who could not get unemployment, who are who did get unemployment, but now that has been slashed in by a half or a third or something like that. And of course, Congress, if you're not from the U.S., uh, Congress went to go vote on that bill, and they couldn't come to resolution, so they just took a vacation and said, ah, we'll get to it later. <laughs> Swear to God, that's exactly what happened. So all these people are in, are in the lurch, and they're waiting for a bailout because there's a lot of different small businesses that have been closed. Getting unemployment has been diminished, so it's pretty hard to pay for all your bills when you have no job when you have no checks coming in, when you have nothing to really fall back on, and you're expecting the government to kind of help you out, bail you out, just like they bailed their friends out and all the big businesses. Well, guess what? They're not going to do it because their vacation was much more important than you. So here's what's happening. The Fed is stepping in and they're buying everything up, and that is going to be a massive problem going on down the road. So you have to look at it like if you have people who can't pay their rent, that's one thing. So they say, okay, well, don't pay the rent, but they won't evict you. Now it goes to the next higher level, which is the people who actually own the buildings. And yes, they're in a, a much better position to handle this, this economic downturn, but for how long? Because guess what? When renters can't pay the rent, now the person who owns the building says, okay, well, let's see what we can do here if we don't get 10% or 20% or 30% of the people who can pay. Well, now I have 70% of income coming in. Well, guess what? Taxes are still due. You still have to pay uh, water, gas, and electricity if that is what is provided for your tenants. And on top of that, you if you don't own the building outright, well, guess what? You got to pay the bank. And the bank says, hey, sorry, uh, for uh, commercial loans, there is no forgiveness policy. We only do that for the retail. So now what do you have? Now you got a problem because you gotta, you're got you going to have a lot of default loans. And uh, I only see that happening, not only for this, but just for the average Joe Blow trying to keep up with the Joneses, getting a new house, so on and so forth. So I see nothing but problems. Anyhow, moving on. All across the country, homeowners and rental tenants are facing a crisis and the signs are showing in a number of hard hit states. And before I move on, I don't know where you're at in the world, uh, but if, if you're in the US or you're in Europe, Canada, Mexico, wherever else, um, do me a favor, take a look at the prices of houses in your area. And you'll see that in a lot of places, especially in the US, the prices of houses are actually going up. Why is that? It's because people think that, they, that this is the best time to buy uh, because they can pick up these houses that are cheap and guess what happens? the price of the house actually has increased. I've had friends who have actually tried to get houses right now because not, not just for investment properties, just for like an upgrade, you know, the family's you know, increasing, so they want to get a bigger house. And guess what happens? So they go to get a house and they say, oh, well, it's at, you know, 200,000 right now. They come back a week later, uh, you know, trying to you know, jockey for a position. And guess what? Now it's 230,000. What the heck happened? Oh, well, the bill just increased the price because there's been so much demand. Where's the demand coming from? Well, it's all the people who want to get for investment properties because they think this is like 2008 and they're going to get a bunch of cheap houses and then, and then the price is going to increase. That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is there's going to be a bunch of defaults. And even the agent told my friend, just give it six months to a year, come back and buy this house at 40% off because they're going to all default on the loans. <sighs> so that's a problem. But uh, I could be wrong, but uh, who knows? All right. Lastly, it states, international investors who invested in U.S. real estate prior to COVID-19 are now left holding the bag, according to a number of reports. A number of real estate proponents believe the U.S. housing market is rebounding, but most people don't understand. The Federal Reserve is trying to keep the real estate market afloat. Uh, 
that note was already done. And then lastly, states analysts for Morgan Stanley say that the Fed is purchasing these outstanding mortgage bonds at 8x the rate. Uh, it is leveraged in the past. Moreover, Fed board members have disclosed that the pace will remain at least at the current pace and distressed U.S. properties are coming in 2021, which I just talked about. So I could go on with this article, but it gets even more grim, uh, but you get the whole gist of it. I don't need to beat a dead horse. Uh, 2021, I think, is going to be an awful time for housing, for small business, and for just business in general and the and the traditional market. I do see uh, an uptick for cryptocurrency digital assets, especially for safe haven assets such as Bitcoin, because there's going to be so much volatility. And uh, if you don't think there's volatility coming, wait till the presidential election. I'll talk about that in a bit. Let's move on.